We're looking at a short-term trend and reversal effect here. So we think we might get some kind of inefficiency effect in major FX pairs during US business hours. We think large transactions might push prices further than they'd go otherwise, which creates some short-term trend and the inevitable reversal back to, to equilibrium afterwards. So we ask the usual questions. Do we have a plausible economic or structural story? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, most large commercial activity in large trades, you know, big, big commercial and big institutional trades happen in US time. So it's plausible that very large trades have this effect of creating short term trending behavior. And that short term trending behavior will, if it's just driven by a few large trades, ultimately reverse back to equilibrium on average. Um, we'll, auto we'll ultimately never really know, but this, this at least seems reasonable enough to continue with the analysis. If we've got something plausible and we can see the effect of it in the data or something consistent with what we think in the data, then that's going to have to be good enough. Second point, has anyone else discovered or traded this? Maybe counterintuitively we feel happier if we're not the only people trading an effect. And the answer on this one is yes, there's a published paper on this effect that we link to on the site. And finally, and this is what we're about to do, do we see evidence in the data? I think we've given reasonable answers to the first two. Um, you know, we don't need to give wonderful flowery answers to the first two. The, the market doesn't doesn't reward us for, for for doing a very detailed job of that we do we just need these things to be to be roughly true to to push the probabilities to our advantage so the next step let's look at the data and it's usually a good idea to start with some high level data exploration rather than diving straight into implementing a trading strategy um, and the reason for this is that it's quicker and it often makes more efficient use of the limited data that we have so we want to quickly invalidate an idea and move on so here we know that if we don't see a sign of the seasonal sort of reversal pattern that we're looking for then there's really no chance of building a trading strategy and we should look at something else instead if on the other hand we do see a reversal effect which is kind of conditional on the on the time of the day on the New Zealand trading hours then we might be in with a chance so we're going to start by looking at some conditional seasonality plots we want to know what cumulative returns look like when we're in a condition where we might be long expecting a reversal and a, and a condition where we might be short, expecting a reversal. So we define our long condition as the price being under the five hour simple moving average. So our long condition is that we've seen some short term negative momentum. And our short condition is the price being above the five hour simple moving average. So again, this is short term positive momentum. And that's just that those definitions are just the kind of first definition we came up with really it's just a crude effect way of quantifying the effect we're after there's no there's no precision and a five period SMA almost certainly isn't going to be optimal but we want any effect that we see to be robust to any reasonable way of measuring it so if we don't see something here on this definition it's going to be hard to get too excited about it we certainly don't want to torture look backs and different moving average types and different different factors. If we, if we don't see something here, then that's not going to excite us. So here's the code that's on the site. You can copy and paste it into the Zorro editor and run it. Um, we're going to run it separately for the long trade condition and then comment out the long bit and uncomment the short bit and then run it separately for the short trade condition. And here's the result. The red lines there are the most important ones. Um, they show the cumulative returns from midnight of being long euro USD when the long entry condition is true. So when we have some short term negative momentum, which we define by the price being under the five hour SMA. And note that this is cumulative returns and that caught me out the first time I did this. So that's cumulative returns from midnight, which is the zero bar there. So you interpret that red, those red bars like they're an equity curve. So you interpret them like they're actually a, a line chart, essentially a line equity curve. You look, so you're going to be looking at the change in the levels of the red bars, not the absolute value of them. The blue bars 
slightly less important but still very interesting they represent the standard deviations of returns which we often use as a proxy for volatility and you can see the volatility spike around 9 a.m which is when the u.s traders wake up and start trading so let's think about what we're looking for here so we're looking for a profitable counter trend trade in new zealand in not new zealand new york working hours so let's define that as 9 a.m to 6 p.m say that is, we're expecting Euro USD to increase during that period from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. when we're conditioned on only trading during periods of short term negative momentum. And clearly it does, quite significantly so, in fact. You can see that that, that sort of, imagine that's a line chart, not a bar. I don't know, I don't know why it's drawn as bars. But you can, you can see that it goes up significantly conditional on that short term negative momentum. So do we see the same on the short side? And the answer is yes, we do, we do. We see that conditional on some short-term positive momentum, price on average reverts during the New York hours. And it's quite a market effect, isn't it? So this is all very promising. So we're seeing the effect very clearly when we summarize across all our data. But the slide up there should be suggesting to you that maybe we need to be a bit careful. It's quite dangerous to make assumptions based only on summary data. So that data may be dominated by huge outliers or the effect may have been concentrated in time. It might have worked well in the early parts of the of the period but not in the later parts for example. It might even be dominated by some bad data points. So we've got to look at this from some more directions, and that's what we're going to do next.